What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Combat Corporation, your source of combat sports. I'm your host, Al the Postmaster Tomorrow, and today I have a good review on the Sanibel Essential Gel Boxing Gloves. Folks, as always, I'm incredibly excited to bring you yet another good review. As today, I have one of the most popular pairs of boxing gloves on the market, Amazon's number one most sold boxing glove. And I wouldn't be shocked if this is in at least a top five most sold pair of boxing gloves of all time. Today, we have the Sanibel Essential Gel Boxing Gloves. And I see these gloves every single day of my life, whether it be I go to the fitness gym and people are using them on the bags, or whether I'm in my beginner's classes, and even a couple of my professional or higher up amateur teammates use these gloves to train it. It's pretty crazy. These gloves are incredibly popular, and you've actually seen some of your favorite fighters that not only are sponsored by Sanibel, uh, but still use their gear like Glover Teixeira, Alex Pajeda, uh, you can talk about Sugar Sean O'Malley, Max Holloway, and uh, Tony Jeffries, another guy on YouTube who is also an Olympic, I believe, bronze medalist in boxing. Uh, for the UK uses these and he had super brittle hands and he said that he was shocked as to how an inexpensive glove like this could really protect his hands so much compared to some other professional options out there. I also read all your comments guys and you always ask me to review more of the beginner to intermediate level stuff and to be honest I hope this doesn't make me sound pretentious. I have so many different professional level gloves that I train in uh, a lot just because I know they're safe. I know they're a good option. Very rarely do I want myself to go backwards per se but I also have to understand that this channel obviously would not be where it is without you so that's why i'm going to be doing a lot more of the beginner to intermediate stuff i'm going to start buying some more beginner to intermediate stuff and it'll actually not hit my wallet as hard either which will be good because now it just comes to the point where you get higher end stuff and it just it kills your bank man <laughs> like it really does it makes you makes you broke but this is also the first video for me of the uh sanibel mini marathon that i talked about in a post recently i basically said that uh I unboxed a bunch of Sanibel stuff about seven to eight months ago now. It was like uh, late September around the time I got married. I bought the whole Sanibel MMA sparring glove lineup for Prime Day off Amazon. And then Zach from Sanibel, drop him some love in the comments below, super cool guy, sent me a couple of different pairs of gloves that he wanted me to try that I hadn't tried before. And, um, and I basically wanted to just do a mini marathon for the next week, week and a half, however long it's going to be, and upload different videos. Probably what I'm going to do is post the boxing glove and the MMA gloves counterpart to it. MMA sparring glove counterpart anyway, uh, on the same day. That way you guys have more content. I know I've been gone for like the last month. Work's been crazy. I do a lot of stuff outside of YouTube, but I took a brief vacation for myself, so I'm very excited to get in front of the camera and do this review. But like I said, this is one of the most popular pairs of boxing gloves on the planet, the Sanibel Essential Gel Boxing Glove. And when I tell you that a good 90% of the beginners in my own MMA gym that I coach at use the Essential lineup, it's pretty crazy. Sanibel's one of the biggest brands in the world nowadays. I believe they are the most sold brand on Amazon for combat sports. And it's because a bunch of their stuff is inexpensive, and there is a difference between cheap and inexpensive. Cheap means that it was made cheaply. It's not going to do a very good job compared to inexpensive, where it just means you get good quality things for a, ch uh, for a cheaper price, if you want to go that way. But most of their stuff is inexpensive, it's durable, and it keeps you safe. That's the most important part about the equipment is that it keeps you safe and it keeps you training, okay? And like I said, I actually bought these gloves myself. These gloves have actually been on the channel once before when I first started. I did the beginner boxing glove uh, comparison with JD, who was a kid that I had in my uh, boxing club at college my senior year, and uh, he liked these above a lot of the other ones. He's, uh, I forgot to include them into the video for some reason, but he said that compared to a 60 or $70 pair of Venoms, I think they were the Ven Venom Challengers, and then uh, the Hayabusa S4s, he liked them more than those. And then he likes these, uh, basically it's equal to the ringside apex is what he came to the conclusion of of the end of the video. 
But uh, like I said, I bought these uh, about four years ago. So Sanibel did not send me these. These are ones that I actually bought myself. So with that said, let's stop the intro and go right into the actual review itself. Starting out with the model I have here for you guys. I got these in 16 ounces. They only come in hook and loop, which is Velcro closure. And then I also got them in the copper coloration. I believe it's copper or bronze, it says. And you can get them in a bunch of different sizes too. They actually have a lot of different sizes for this glove, which makes it a very versatile glove. You got 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 ounces. I went with 16 because I'm a bigger guy, and 16s usually work to fit my hands. Uh, but I mean, the 8 and 10 ounces can fit anywhere from uh, a woman that maybe has small hands or, or a kid that has small hands. And then obviously the regular size is 12, 14, 16. Is, you know, 12 is usually 120 uh, or below. 14 is upwards about 160, if not 155, and then uh, basically 165, 170 and above, you'd use 16 or 18, uh, but they don't have 18s for these, which I think, I think they'd actually reach out to more people if they did. But still, eight through 16 ounces, that's a lot of different sizes for a entry-level glove. You also have, I think, eight different colorways to pick from. I think, let's see if I can get this by the top of my head, but as always, I'll post it across the screen for you. Uh, they have solid black, white, silver, blue, purple i think it's purple or 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 pink green uh orange they have solid orange and then i think i'm missing one um i think i said white and silver already but i think i'm missing one but you got about eight different colors to pick from and basically what it is is like as you can see here you got that color there it would just change depending on what color you got so if you got red all the copper colors here would be red or if you got blue all the copper colors would be blue stuff like that so you have a ton of different color options so in short i got 16 ounce copper coloration there is no lace-up version of the glove so if you are a fan of lace-ups then then it's not the glove for you i guess but at the end of the day uh they have tons of different options especially when it comes to the beginner market when you go to the look of the glove like i said you can see the back of it has the sanibel logo there and that is uh, in copper. And that's really cool because that's the color of the glove. And then in that basic uh, text right there, it's like a laboratory text. It kind of looks futuristic in a lot of ways. But it's a sandable right there, also in copper. The rest of the striking surface is in black. And you can see it reflects very well because of the material that it's made out of. And I have the ring light right on it. But maybe if I bring it a little closer, you can see it without the shadow. I'm still learning lighting, folks. But basically, you got the black on the back here. And that works very well. Then also on the back, going from the thumb all the way up here, you got a nice copper stripe and that goes right into this part near the fingers as well and i like how that connects you can see it actually lines up perfect when you close your fist and that separates the white and the black here uh, so it's black towards the tip of the fingers you got a copper sweeping line here and then you have a white piece right there towards the top of the knuckles now i don't know if sanibel did that on purpose it does kind of line up with your knuckles kind of like an amateur boxing glove if you if you don't know basically amateur boxing gloves when you would punch something if there was a white surface at the top of the glove that's what it used to be when i boxed a judge would be able to say oh okay that was a clean shot i could see the white part clearly land on someone's head gear or body or whatever it might be uh, i will say that the knuckles line up more or less like slightly above it but at the same time it's still a nice little uh you know design change and it also kind of looks like maybe that's what they were trying to go for uh when we come down to the palm you can see across a grip bar it says test your ability or obtain your ability rather and that's pretty cool they also have another one that says fight for it i like both of them uh, and I like this because obtain your ability could be, you know, you're a beginner. Let's go see what you got, basically is the way I interpret that. Uh, the stitching throughout it is usually a double line stitching when it comes to gloves like these. And you can see that you have orange stitching, well, the copper stitching going throughout there. The mesh palm here is also that copper color. And it would be the same thing with any other glove that you got in color. So if you got the red one, this would be a red mesh. You get more of that uh, black piping here. The palm is primarily black, except for the piping down here across the palm itself and the... Uh, the strap is also that copper color. It says 16 ounces down here with the uh, Sanibel logo. So that's all like right in screen printed into the vinyl. And you got more of that nice uh, copper stitching that kind of complements the glove. You also have more of that piping down here. When you come to the back, you can see that it says Sanibel and that's in like a, a plastic patch here with the logo. And then when we come down here, it's I'm pretty sure, let me read it one more time. Essential gel glove um, right there at the side, which is also a plastic uh, covering there. It says essential gel glove. When you open the glove up, Sanibel does a pretty good job of uh, actually kind of changing it up like some other gloves out there. The base part is actually a, a nice shiny black compared to the rest of it because it's two separate materials, which I'll go into in a, in a second. So the interior lining is all black. And then you can see it's a Sanibel 
16 ounces right there on the tag on the inside. So overall, even for a beginner glove, you know, Sandable even says on their website that they don't like the big flashy designs and stuff, but I think this is like flashy enough to where it looks basic and it also looks kind of cool because even if you get into a sport, you know, some people might just get bored bored with like a basic black glove or a basic red glove or a basic white glove, you know, stuff like that. They like the different looks to it and also it gives more people options to kind of pick a color closest to what they would like. Now when we come to the build of the glove, that's where the glove really shines in a lot of ways, especially for the price point that you get for 30 bucks. A lot actually goes into the glove. When we talk about the outer shell, it's what Sandable does with virtually all their gloves. It's called the engineered leather, they call it. It's basically vinyl, so it's like a polyurethane sheet that they print out, and they basically uh, wrap the glove in it. And it's actually a pretty stretchy and thick vinyl over the padding, too. And what's nice, the reason why you want stretchy is that means that it won't rip easily because if the vinyl is stiff, it could rip very easily. You want vinyl to be stretchy. So when, say, you're doing MMA sparring, you're dragging it on the floor, or when you punch and twist a lot on the bags, it's, a lot of people don't know when you're punching and twisting, the leather's actually catching and twisting on the surface as well. Uh, that could rip easily if it wasn't a flexible uh, engineered leather on the outside. And also, fun fact too about Sandable, everything that they make is not actually man, it's all man made rather. It's not actually made of any animal products at all. There's no real leathers on anything they make. They do engineered leathers, which they, what they call it. They also have some gloves that are straight up cloth, which I'll review soon as well in this mini marathon. Um, spoiler alert. <laughs> but then they also have a uh, uh, a bunch of other things like they made a glove out of grape leather and one out of cactus leather which is pretty cool so everything that you get if you're like animal conscious or if you if you're you know some some people that are vegan really do not like anything to do with animal products this is actually a good choice for you too uh, but that's basically what you got going on here the entire glove is made out of that vinyl uh, and then when we go to the padding of the glove you actually have one solid piece of foam and it's called IMF tech which is injected molded foam, or some people call it ringside foam because they made it very popular. They just call it their uh, injected gel foam. And basically the idea is you have one solid piece of foam and you can see that too, because there's no splits here. And you can see the gloves in two separate spots. You got the wrist cuff and you got the top of the glove here. Uh, and basically the foam is one solid piece that they inject with gel. And what that does is it kind of stiffens the foam on the insides. When you punch, it mitigates any type of impact that will come your way. And people love this type of padding because it's inexpensive for one. And a lot of beginners use it simply because when you use that, it's safer than say like your Everlast glove that you get from Dick Sporting Goods that has rebonded it, which is basically carpet padding. Uh, this actually will prevent your hand from breaking. It stops impact from getting down to your wrist, all the way up to your elbows, your shoulders, stuff like that. It keeps you safer. So that's what they have in this glove like they do with a lot of other beginner gloves out there. So Sandable's not necessarily, you know, bringing something new to the table with that, but they do it very well because the padding on the inside, the gel padding, uh, that's actually injected into the foam itself is very protective in this glove compared to some others. And you have that same type of foam uh, piece that's on the thumb as well. So the thumb's in a very good position and also has a nice thumb attachment that you can see there. So it, it's flexible enough, especially if you do a sport like Muay Thai or um, you know kickboxing that involves the clinch. It's able to be flexible a little bit and it's the same thing with that padding too. Since it's in one solid piece, it moves relatively easy. Sometimes IMF Tech foam gloves can really be stiff and this this case it's actually a really soft feel to it i'd say if you were to put it on like the um like a, a soft meter like you would with beds there's soft medium soft um medium then there's uh medium firm firm stuff like that i'd say it's right in the middle if not on the medium soft side it's actually a pretty soft padding that you got going on here uh when we come down to the back of the glove the one area that this glove probably doesn't do the greatest job in is the wrist support in some ways because there is no splint across and there's really no padding across the back of your wrist and that's basically this is kind of what your wrist support is going on what saves it though is that this actually snaps backwards right and so they're starting to make the back of the glove ridge uh rigid that way it stays tight to your arm so when you punch it doesn't put your wrist down like that but in general the wrist support in this glove all the beginners in my classes have not complained about wrist issues or knuckle issues in these gloves but for me using them i could definitely feel that you have to kind of keep your wrist a little stronger i wrap my wrist a little bit more when i use my hand wraps with these but overall the wrist support's not terrible it could be a little bit better uh, but it's better than a lot of other gloves out there. When we come over here, you can see that the grip bar is just a very soft piece of foam, just like it is everywhere else. It just feels like your standard foam. And there's also padding, which is great for drilling, 
down here across the um, the palm and down the forearm. And it's just basically like an open cell foam. It kind of feels like a, a mattress topper foam here and it feels nice. And what that does is it hugs to your wrist a little bit more and it also protects your forearm, stops bruising and stuff too. You also have a great thing for beginners and that's that mesh palm. Now, a lot of people will see mesh as cheap because it is less expensive than vinyl or leather. But the thing is about this, it's very easy for it to um, breathe out. A lot of beginners simply don't know how to clean their gear or how to take care of it. So they'll just keep it in their bag overnight and then wonder why it's soaked the next day. This will help it a little bit. I actually started in Thailand primarily because it's a very hot human country. Um, and that's basically what you got going on here. Uh, so it breathes it out very well. A lot of people say, well, it keeps you cool while you're punched. Not really. Uh, it's more or less just to air out the inside of the glove so it doesn't rot basically from the inside out. So the wrist strap you got here though is a very strong Velcro, uh, but some of the higher up sandable gloves honestly don't have as strong Velcro as this glove does, so I always wondered why. Uh, but the wrist strap attaches to the inside of the palm here, and that allows it to really strap across your wrist very good, which gives you good wrist support. And when you open the glove up, you'll actually notice that there's two separate materials for the interior lining, and a lot of tie gloves do that. But in this case, you have this here, which is the vinyl that's on the outside, the engineered leather, and then the rest of it is just a poly, uh, urethane type of fabric, you know, um, not even a poly cotton. It's more like a nylon lining on the inside here. And it's actually very moisture wicking. Now the fit and feel of the glove when you put it in, it's very comfortable. It allows you to get into a nice natural fist. And also the tips of the fingers have like a little piece. It kind of feels like foam almost for your fingers to grip onto. And the grip bar feels very good. Someone actually commented the other day and asked where I put my grip. Some people apparently are punching around the grip bar like that. I put my fingers all the way in here. I never heard of people punching like that, but it makes some sense. I guess you could do that. I'm actually going to, I might try that on the bag later, see how that goes. Maybe it changed my whole game. I doubt it, but, but there's a nice uh, piece of foam here at the tip of your fingers that feels good. And like I said, it's a very flexible glove right off the bat. And, and um, it's very, very soft padding as well. I cannot feel my knuckles at all. And my thumbs in a nice position. And even here feels really good. Now, when I strap this up, it stays to my wrist pretty tight as well. But like I said, you can see that it does drape down a bit. It does stop me from going back too far, but I could still snap my wrist going that way a little bit, and I don't like that. So what you could do is you could take this part of the wrist strap and just bring it up higher, which is nice. I do like that. Uh, and that actually helps a little bit too, kind of stabilize your wrist a little bit more. You can see that it doesn't go down as far. But when I punch, it feels good. There's tons of room on the inside of the hand for hand wraps. Uh, you know, I encourage every beginner to wear hand wraps. Uh, some people don't, uh, but that's just me. I like wearing hand wraps. And then uh, the only other thing is that when you strap this tight, the Velcro does overlap slightly, but every glove can do that. I have gloves that cost like literally triple more than this glove that do that. And that's just kind of not something I'm gonna knock it for. But I gave you a long explanation about the glove, especially for the beginners watching this video. Let's go ahead and go into the bag work and we'll come back with my final thoughts. So when it comes to the bag work with these gloves, you can definitely tell that they were designed to protect a, a beginner's hand simply because of how over emphasizing the padding is over the knuckles. It is virtually impossible for your knuckles to really feel much impact that's really going to hurt you a lot. On top of it, the gloves are relatively light and they have a good forward pressure, so you're able to really pop off some good punches, rip some good combinations. And at the end of the day, everything is really safe. Like I said, I just wish the wrist support was maybe a touch better, but the shock absorbing so good, it won't matter. When it comes to the look of this glove, like I said, the Sanibel gloves always kind of have that simplistic yet futuristic look to it. At the end of the day, for a $30 glove, they definitely look cooler than some other gloves out there for that same price range instead of getting a basic black pair of everlast you can see that these actually care about the detail i really like that white part coming at you it reminds me of my old school amateur boxing days so at the end of the day they look really cool all right folks so my final verdict for the sanable essential gel boxing gloves basically the beginning part of the video was very very long as always i put time stamps for you guys but this is more or less for the beginner and i'm talking to you now basically i'm trying to give you every amount of detail that i can about the glove uh, at the beginning to tell you what it's made out of, why it lasts so long, why that's good, why it's bad, stuff like that. And in this case, with the final thoughts part, I basically tell you what I love about it and what I don't like about it. In this case, I like a lot more than I dislike about the glove. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, especially for the beginner market, is maintenance, okay? And that's the thing that a lot of people never think about when they get boxing gloves. They just 
put them on and off. They let them air out, do all these other things. But no one ever really stops. Not no one, but not a lot of people ever stop to just wipe the glove down. Use If you got a leather glove, use leather treatment every now and again. It makes it last a lot longer. Because I've seen people trash really nice expensive gloves within months. Because they just don't take care of it. Like a teammate of mine just never takes his stuff home when you spar with him. He has smelly gloves all the time. You don't want to be the smelly glove guy. You want to take care of your stuff. And this glove makes it incredibly easy to do that. For a beginner, that's my number one thing is go home and clean your stuff. For one, it's sanitized as well. You're going to sanitize yourself. So if you're doing MMA, boxing, kickboxing, there's always risk of things like ringworm, staph infection, and vitigo. Clean your stuff. Gets rid of skin infections like that. And easy enough to do with the engineered leather because all I have to do when I come home is just take a Lysol wipe and wipe the glove down because of that engineered leather. It'd be the same as cleaning a plastic tarp or cleaning a plastic tub of something, right? It's as easy as wiping it down because plastic's an incredibly easy surface to clean on. That's why a lot of people use it. And it's the same thing here. In, in essence, think about this as plastic cloth is the easiest way I could word it. It's basically leather that was man-made out of plastic. And that's what you got going on here. Uh, so it's very easy to clean the outside of the glove and the inside is also incredibly easy to clean because you got that mesh palm that airs the glove out. And a lot of people say, well, why do you need the glove to air out? The more sweat that gets into the padding ruins the padding, ruins the inside of the glove. It's just, the smelling bad isn't just smelling bad, that's flat out bacteria eating your glove alive at the end of the day, and that's not what you want. And then when you put your hand back in, you get that bacteria on you. Uh, so that's basically what you got going on here. So you wanna go ahead and let it air out because of that mesh palm, it helps a lot. And the inside is kind of similar to the outside in that the bottom part is that same engineered leather and the rest of it is that nylon poly lining that you got going on here so it, uh, the, the easy way i could feel it, it kind of feels like a backpack material or like a wind pant material is what you got going on here it's a basic polyurethane cloth also going on inside here so all you got to do is take a lysol wipe shove your hand in clean the inside and guess what the vented palms there you can just leave it into a nice room that's not humid right i mean i even go a step further because i'm crazy about my gloves and i have a dehumidifier in my room it's a very small one and it gets the moisture out of the room which helps especially now that the warmer months are coming but you don't want humidity to build up in your glove which is why for me this glove for a beginner super easy maintenance just take it home and wipe it down you can use the uh, disinfecting spray that i like to use as well i even like to use some laundry sanitizer put it in a spray bottle put it on a nice cloth and just wipe it down makes it smell nice as well and i shove dryer sheets on the inside because it helps the inside of the glove dry out when you clean it and it also makes it smell nice as well the stitching on the glove is another thing that I look at for, for beginner gloves because you will see all the time the stitching on the sides will pop and then the whole padding will fly out. I've never seen that happen with gloves like these with the Sanibel gloves. The first thing I have seen go on Sanibel gloves is actually the, the um, actual lining here on the outside, the, the uh, outer shell. If you don't take care of vinyl, usually underneath vinyl gloves like this is cloth that the vinyl is stitched onto. And that is the same case with this glove. Trust me, I've seen it. It's a type of cloth on, on the inside. It's a very cheap type of cotton or a poly cotton that you got going on there. And basically when this flakes off, you start to expose that cloth and it effectively makes the glove useless. The, the really reason why the PU is on the outside here is to stop moisture from getting into the cloth, from getting into the padding and breaking the padding apart. And that's what you don't want. The moment, especially with IMF tech foam, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, when you get a bubble in that, because it's one solid mold, it's one solid piece. It's kind of like anything else in life. If it's one solid piece and you make a chip at it, eventually the chip will start to go bigger and bigger and bigger and ruin it, right? And that's basically what you got going on here. So I've not had any bubbling in this glove because it's so easy to clean this glove. Um, but I have seen some of my beginners that don't clean their stuff and the, the glove starts to show like bubbles all along, like the fingertips on the back of the glove here. I've not had that issue because they're just so easy to clean. They're way easier to clean than really a lot of other gloves on the market because of that. So the IMF Tech Foam is very protective. Okay, that's the other thing too. Now that we're talking about the maintenance part, let's talk about the safety features. The knuckle padding in this glove is so dampening for when you hit stuff. 
it really mitigates any type of impact on your knuckles on the back of your hands those are actually the bones that break a lot it's not so much your knuckles you'll have knuckle discomfort and stuff like that and yes you can break your knuckles i've seen it happen obviously the biggest injuries i see is usually your hand when people say you break your hand it's usually the back of your hands your metacarpals and tarsals because when your bones break they don't break outward they break upward like that so why we wrap our hands puts a little bit of compression on it stops bones from popping out keeps everything in place and we have padded gloves in boxing and in other sports simply because when you punch it's not really for the safety of your sparring partner or your safety of your the guy you're fighting it's for the safety of your hand it keeps everything in place so when you punch with these gloves really protects your hands in a lot of ways uh so it also stops shock which kind of takes away the one point that i don't like about the glove is the wrist support but because the top of the knuckle is so padded very rarely are you going to have shock that really reaches down to your wrist even it usually stops right on point you still have a nice feel when you hit the bag and it still gives you energy to thrive off it has a nice bounce to it which i like um but the one thing that i wish was a little bit better was the wrist support maybe a bar at the back or maybe make the padding go down a little bit more and that way the wrist support would really wrap around your wrist well i will say though when you put the glove on when you strap it it stays pretty good on your wrist. It's not going to go anywhere. And it does have a nice natural bend to put you into a natural punch position. And if you're watching this and you've never done this before, usually when you punch, you're not punching flat like that. You have a slight curve, very slight curve to your wrist. And you're punching with the first two knuckles usually. Although some people like to punch with all of them. Um, but it all depends where you're at in my opinion. Uh, which, is, which is good for wrist support as far as the knuckle padding stopping shock from getting down there. But what worries me is people are going to punch and go downward like that. Then there's really no support on the back of your wrist. That could be dangerous. But I do think that basically when people start out, they're hitting stuff. It's going to stop the shock so easily. I've Like I said, all the beginners I've had that have used this for bag work, mitts, sparring, not one person has said my wrist hurts. It's usually my knuckles hurt because they put their hand wraps on and it's scraping wrong or whatever it might be or their, or their form's incorrect. And obviously smashing bones on surfaces for the first time is not going to feel comfortable for anybody. The inside of the glove feels really good, even for me. I love how it feels. It's very flexible. There's tons of room for hand wraps, and especially if you do have brittle hands, it's a good glove for that, but you can also wrap your hands up thick with a knuckle guard. If you're just starting out the sport, you don't know what that is, that's fine. Maybe you're starting out and you don't know how to wrap hands, so you got your quick gel wraps or something like that. You can put those in and fit easily and comfortably. I also love how flexible it is. Great grips for things like Muay Thai and for uh, kickboxing that involves the clinch or MMA, big gloves, sparring, it works very, very well for that. Overall, incredibly comfortable on the inside. It dries out quickly on the inside as well, and it's not so baggy on the inside, which is really surprising even for the lining that they use. But in essence, uh, and in general, what I feel about the glove is I love it. For a beginner model glove, for 30 bucks that you can get off Amazon, it can be delivered to your doorstep in two days if you got Prime. And that's the other thing too, is I trust these gloves with my, with my fighters, my beginners, right? And I even have a pro teammate that I was sparring with yesterday that uses these, right? And he likes them. This is like his third pair of them. And, and I've given him... Uh, one time I, I had an extra pair of higher end, like $100 pair of gloves that I wasn't using. They didn't fit. They fit him. He didn't like them as much as he did these, which is pretty crazy to think about. So overall, these gloves are very, very good for you. 30 bucks, very easy to clean. And for me, in that beginner mindset, I give them a 10 out of 10. Because for a beginner, there are a lot of gloves that I do recommend to people that I still don't think do as good a job as these. These gloves have kept my own beginners safe. They kept them clean. They're very easy. They're inexpensive. They're available. There's options, 10 through 16 ounces. There's eight different colors you can pick from. The glove just checks off all the marks that you need. Now for a professional, would I recommend these compared to something if you had the budget to spend? It all depends on what you're looking for. Like I said, my teammate's weird, and he just thought that these gloves were better than the ones that I gave him. That's fine. That's what he likes. In my case, uh, for like a professional to an intermediate guy that wants something a little bit more, I'd still give these a solid 8 out of 10 because they're going to keep you safe. They're just not going to do what you want them to do as a professional. They are very much a learner's glove, and they will help you determine what intermediate to professional level glove you might want to look into. But I would recommend these to beginners that have never even thrown a punch in their life because they will keep you safe, and it's not like going out and buying a 
like if you're doing your first Muay Thai class, go and take your uh, coach's recommendation. Just go buy a pair of Fairtex gloves, but they don't have padding in the knuckles. The wrist support sucks compared to even these, right? And so that's what I mean. Overall, for a beginner, I think it's one of the best gloves you can get out there. There are also some that I love that I would compare them to, like the Ringside IMF Tech Apex Flax. I love those gloves. I would put these right there with them. There are some gloves that by Sanibel that are actually a little bit higher up on the tier list as far as like expensive, they're intermediate professional models that I still would compare these to easily. Um, overall, very safe choice. I would recommend this glove. 10 out of 10 would recommend if you're starting the sport. Even if you've been around the sport for a while and you need something to use, it's not a bad option at all. I think you would really enjoy these gloves. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a little bit more extensive, but like I said, especially for the beginners, if you're watching this, I hope you took some of my words um, you know, to heart, basically. I, I want you guys to know that I want you to train and be successful in your training, and I think this glove is a very good pair uh, to start out with. There are some others out there that I'm going to review, but there are some others that I really wouldn't recommend. Um, but these, I would definitely say the ringside, uh, Apex Flash is a good point. These gloves are very similar to those, only those cost about uh, 40 to 50, sometimes 60, depending where you go from. I'd say the wrist support's a little bit better, and they do last a little bit longer. But overall, really good solid choice for a good pair of gloves, especially if you got Amazon Prime. Free shipping, ships to your house in two days. Can't beat that. So guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. We're already at 8.75 thousand subscribers. We're so close to nine and then eventually 10, which is crazy. It's all because of you. And it's because you guys hit that like and notific, uh, sorry, that like and subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell for future uploads. It's a small click for you, but it means a lot for the channel. And on top of it, above all, comment below what you want to see me review next. And also, if I left anything out, let me know. And also, do me a favor and tell me what you thought about the review in the comments. I'm always receptive to you. Also, follow me on all my social media pages. I usually respond to messages as fast as I can. Sometimes it puts it in a spam folder or it just doesn't alert me at all. And I look through it every couple weeks and I have to go find it. Uh, but I have been responding a lot more frequently lately. And I really appreciate all of you reaching out. So with that said, everyone, thank you so much for watching Your Sorcerers but Combat Sports, the Combat Corporation. I've been your host, Al the Postmaster tomorrow. And as always, I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day, everybody.